For many years now, Marvel has gone from a second-tier comic book company to the premier home of many beloved heroes and villains, and has reached people far and wide in a way very few other brands could hope for. But let's not forget, they weren't always like this. Before the massive hit of the MCU, they at first tried to play by DC's books and reach audiences through the direct-to-video market. But unlike the former, the Marvel animated movies never took off in the same way DC did. And I would be lying if I said I didn't see why. I mean, it's not like the last ranking I did where everything was so sporadic in quality, but more so in the sense that a lot of these movies don't have much going for them. But with that said, some of these films are genuinely good movies that I think can stand up there with the MCU. And the number one pick on this list is one of my all-time favorite movies. But before we get into that, the basic rules for this ranking list is that they have to be made in-house at Marvel Animation. So no Toei and no Sony. And it has to be listed on the official Wikipedia page to count. So, without a further ado, let's take a look at every Marvel Animation movie from worst to best. Boo! You stink! Honestly, I went into this movie hoping it was a lot better than I remembered. And it was. It's now bordering on a 3 out of 10 instead of a 1 out of 10. I already made a 30 minute long video talking about this garbage movie, so I won't dwell on it for long. All you need to know is that all of my previous complaints still hold up. But I also have a few new ones as well. The characters are either useless or unlikable. Everything with Banner is unpleasant padding that could easily be removed. Thor's storyline has no payoff or even a reason to exist. And I still don't buy that the Avengers would struggle against the Shatari this badly. Especially given how effortlessly they stopped them the first time around. I mean, his attempts at being more adult is admirable, until you realize how cowardly it is with how many times it pulls the fake out death on you. But, like I said, I did find some positives this time around. They at least tried to make the Shatari more of an active threat, the opening fight scene is pretty cool and where the movie peaks, and it has an actual three-act story instead of just character introductions for half the runtime. But is that really enough to call this an improvement? It's still a movie that takes two steps back from a movie that already needed one step forward. Moving on. The Invincible Iron Man? More like The Invincible Iron Meh? Meh. But seriously. This was just a slog to sit through, and I struggled to find anything to say about it. I could talk about how bad the CGI models look, but now that I've seen the horrors of Teen Kong, that's not even worth bringing up. No, a real problem is that they changed Tony's origin story from being an egotistical playboy that learns how his actions have consequences to an altruistic man who was only held back by the people around him. Doesn't that defeat a huge part of what made Tony such a great character? Why would they remove something that's a core part to his character? Well, to that I say... As for the stuff I like, there was a plot twist I didn't see coming, despite how it was subtly hinted at throughout the entire movie. And it does have the occasional cool or creepy visual that makes it sort of fun. That's it. There's just nothing else about this movie to talk about. Almost nothing in this film was memorable, not even for the wrong reasons. I had never watched a movie that made me feel this empty from beginning to end, and I truly hope I never see a movie this dull ever again. I have studied the martial ways of the social justice warrior. Fight me in an argument if you dare. P. 
perish under the sword of my self-righteousness. Out of all the movies on this list, Marvel Rising Secret Warriors had to be the one I was the least excited to watch, even more so than Ultimate Avengers 2. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. This truly feels like a desperate attempt on Marvel's part to make their new inclusive heroes somehow relevant. And surprise, surprise, it's a dumpster fire. Look at what you've done! Now the animators are gonna have to draw all this fire! The entirety of the first act is just an exposition dump of boring, cringe-inducing dialogue before they show us exactly what these people are talking about. Why not just open up with that, then skip a few months later to the present day? And just like the comics, this movie's message is as subtle as... I get that tolerance is a good thing, I won't contest that. But it's so surface level, there might as well be no water. Also, the main conflict is about a pale-skinned race enslaving a minority to do their bidding. Once again, very subtle messaging. And the characters are just so flat. None of them have any defined personality outside of their goals or motivations. Except Squirrel Girl. She's the unfunny one. The Kree are some of the most pathetic villains I've ever seen. How are they getting their butts kicked by these kids so easily? But at least it had a few decent soundtracks and the rooftop fight was honestly really good. Now don't get me wrong, this is still pretty bad, but when compared to the bottom two, it at least has personality. And no, I am not forgetting the follow-ups this movie had. Those are officially listed as episodes, so they don't count. I remember thinking this movie was pretty lame when I was younger, and let me tell you, I was right. This movie is really, really lame. I guess I could give it credit that the body movement is better than in the first movie, but that's made void because the mouth movements are considerably worse. It's really distracting with how choppy and pasted on they look, but that's just a minor issue. I think the biggest problem comes mostly from the conflict between the two characters. In the first one, Iron Man and Hulk had to embrace each other's methods to take down a greater foe. Here, they tried to do something similar with their combat strategies, but unlike the first movie where both characters' methods had their pros and cons evenly distributed, Iron Man's wing it mentality usually ends with the villains getting one step ahead of them both, while all of Cap's plans, and I do mean all of them, worked 100% every time. And by the time they do embrace the other's methods, it doesn't feel earned because we never saw the benefits that come with both. Only that Cap's way is right, and Tony's way is wrong. And with that said, there's really no conflict between the two. Don't get me wrong, I don't think every movie needs the main characters to have a conflict with each other to be good. But, it depends on the movie. You can't have a superhero team-up without a genuine wedge between them, as it makes said team-up a lot less interesting. And I know Hydra was in the first movie, but I'm sorry, they should have just removed Hydra and kept it to Taskmaster. He would have been a much better villain for both heroes to fight than the Red Skull. And while it was cool to see the Hulk return, and he definitely helped make this movie a lot better, he's just there to perform Deus Ex Hulkina. But with that said, I really can't recommend this to anyone, except maybe very little kids who just want to see their favorite heroes unite. But even then, I think you're better off watching the Infinity Saga, or Earth's Mightiest Heroes, or Avengers Assemble. Before going into it, I knew Frostfight wasn't going to be that good of a movie, but I was still disappointed. This movie is corny, and I mean really corny. 
Like, I could feel my toes curling watching it. That is how corny it is. Its message about believing is not only generic, but is done with as much nuance as a botched circus act. Also, why does no one question that Santa is real except Iron Man? I buy that Thor doesn't question it, but literally no one else? Not even Cap? And I don't know. Alfheim being made into Christmas land is just kind of dumb. And to think, we haven't even gotten to the story yet. There's a lot of largely disconnected plot lines in this movie. Thor and Hulk deliver presents to families while dragging a poor civilian along. The Avengers go to Christmas Land to look for Santa. Loki and Emir want to steal Santa's powers. Rocket and Groot are trying to capture Santa for a false bounty. And the Partridge has lost his pear tree. And none of them connect until the very end. But to be fair, I liked some aspects of this movie. Mrs. Claus giving Rocket and Groot PTSD with her driving skills, and Hulk performing a Yuletide bombing run during his gift-giving endeavors are the funniest parts of the movie. But my favorite scene has to be when the Avengers talk about their fondest Christmas memories. It truly captures the spirit of the holiday. But I guess I was expecting this movie to be unapologetically bonkers and fully embrace the inherent insanity of the Avengers saving Santa from a mad god, instead of a special that takes itself pretty seriously all things considered. As is, this is just a peppermint flavored misfire. But next year, if I want to watch a Christmas special that embraces its own absurd premise, I just watched the Predator Holiday Special. It's both funnier and shorter. Ho, ho, holy sh- Thunder, feel the thunder. Lightning and the thunder. Thor, Tales of Asgard is without a doubt one of the movies of all time. Go on. As a standalone, it's fine, but it isn't a good prequel. I mean, I like how Thor goes from this prideful, arrogant boy to a much more humbled and wise man, and I like the resolution between him and his father. But the movie sets up things that are never used later or mentioned again. Thor is surprisingly good with a hammer. That never comes back. Loki is immune to Jotunheim's cold. That never comes into play anywhere in the movie. You know, those kinds of problems. It also doesn't help that nothing exciting or entertaining happens for a good majority of the movie. They actually made a bar fight boring. How do you do that? The final battle is really underwhelming and ends far too quickly, and then the movie's over. Yeah, it just starts, does some things, and then the movie's over. No conclusion, no closure. And that's the biggest problem. It feels more like a part one that never got its part two. I have nothing more to say about this film. If you like Thor, you might enjoy it, but for me, this movie dropped the hammer pretty hard. There are no strings on me. I really wanted to like this movie, like a lot of other people, but I'm sorry. This movie is the epitome of okay. The basic story is that the children of the Avengers have been sealed away in a secret base to prevent the murderous Ultron from finding them. As you can imagine, the kids do something stupid and bring Ultron right to them. Don't you love it when the main characters are the ones who cause the conflict? You dumbass! The action scenes are... Decent, but not great. Most of the next Avengers are honestly just fine, except Wasp Jr. He's the annoying one. And Thor is a jerk. I know he left Earth to rule Asgard, but you'd think he'd do something to help his friends instead of leaving them to die at Ultron's hand, let alone leaving his daughter behind with them at the mercy of Ultron. With that said, I did like Thorin's journey throughout the film, or when the characters are confronted by the fact that they must carry on their forefathers' legacy. 
Ultron City is a pretty cool location. The Hulk helped make the final battle more interesting, even if it's another Deus Ex Hulkina. But let's talk about the Giga Chad himself, Ultron. He is easily one of the best villains these movies have to offer, with a looming presence felt throughout the film, how he easily dispatches all in his way, and it helps that he has some pretty badass lines as well. You must realize, the end is here. In summary, a good villain, one sort of engaging character, and some cool locales isn't enough to save this movie from just being a poor man's Teen Titans. Also, I noticed something strange while watching this movie. The children of powerful beings, Norse mythology, Thor's daughter, an unkillable entity chasing after our heroes, a strong angry guy with a beard, and a talking severed head. Avengers, assemble! Ultimate Avengers is to its sequel as King Kong 76 is to King Kong Lives. While the second film is trash, the first one was pretty good, all things considered. Also, the sequels are at the bottom of their ranking list, and the first film's somewhere in the middle. So, there's that. I mean, this movie, there's nothing special about it, but there are a few things that clicked with me. I really liked the stuff involving Cap dealing with modern day and the shock that comes with it. He really is the heart of this movie, and I truly think this is one of the best adaptations of this storyline. Even though it's last minute, I do like the final battle with the Hulk. It's definitely the best part of the movie. And while I don't agree with Banner, his desperations to control the Hulk are understandable. But it's also understandable why no one wants to help him. I also like that it's not afraid to have people die, like actually die and not pull the fake out death anywhere. I don't know, I just think that ruined the tension is all. And that World War II opening was a lot of fun. I mean, this movie does have its fair share of problems. Despite being built up as this big deal, the Shatari are defeated pretty easily. The romance between Bruce and Betty is non-existent, but at least it's better than what it is in the sequel. And outside of Cap and Banner, none of the characters in this movie are fleshed out beyond their most simple traits. I still think there are better movies on this list, but for a first film, it's honestly pretty decent. And I actually somewhat recommend this movie. But maybe watch Earth's Mightiest Heroes first. Don't know why I said that, but I just felt like I had to. Oh my god, now we have a common enemy, we have to work together. This without a doubt, is a pretty weak film. But it's also the funniest. I don't know, there is just a lot of funny lines and interactions in this movie that kept it from being boring. I know this was never made to be high art, but this was honestly a fun team-up movie, and I feel like that's all the people making it were striving for. If anything, the short runtime actually worked in its favor in that regard. The conflict starts almost immediately, and it's a non-stop adventure afterwards. Zack surprisingly works as a villain that would require both Hulk and Iron Man to beat. And I do like how Iron Man and Hulk eventually learn to respect each other as the movie goes on. Ultimately leading to both using the other's methods and tactics to ultimately defeat Zack. Plus, the graveyard scene was just really cool and atmospheric. But with that said, the CGI doesn't look that good. Characters just drop out of the story and are never mentioned again. The Wendigo, as cool as their scene is, are just tacked on. And the team up mostly just goes through the motions. But with that said, if that's all you want, then I think this movie is worth a watch on that merit alone. All are punished! I'd describe Avengers Confidential as the Chad version of Heroes United, but that's not saying much. The action and animation are top notch, and I like how both characters work off each other. I don't know, out of all the heroes you can put together, I can see why Black Widow and Punisher would be the ones to butt heads the most. 
and I really do appreciate how the plot is almost always moving. Except for the part where the movie stops so we can get a 6 minute exposition dump. And I'll just say it, everything with Black Widow and Elias feels more like it was put in there to hit a checkbox. And the ending fight tries really hard to be this epic showdown. Remember how out of nowhere Hulk appearing in Heroes United was? Well, now we have the whole shebang with several iconic Avengers and Captain Marvel. <laughs> and yes, none of them were established in the film prior to this moment. All so they can fight a bunch of goons that were also never established. It's really out of left field and just brings down any tension this fight could have. Okay, to be fair, I like this little bit of continuity here. Next time Stark asks for help, I'm gonna put a bullet in him. And it's just as nice to see that you're still bulletproof, Stark. Regardless, this is a pretty solid team-up movie. Not a classic, but one that might be worth having in your collection. I just love the smell of fear. You know, it's only after doing this video that I realized just how much of a presence the Hulk has in the Marvel Animation lineup. And you know what the weird thing is? His movies are honestly some of the best amongst these largely mediocre movies. Case in point, Hulk Where Monsters Dwell. This is without a doubt the best of the two holiday movies, with all of its subplots being more tightly connected and ultimately leading to the same destination as it were. Unlike Frost Fight, where it was all completely disconnected and just comes together at the last minute. And Nightmare, while one note, is a palpable threat. Plus, it's always cool to see obscure heroes like the Howling Commandos. And while none of them are particularly fleshed out, they are distinct enough to stand out from one another. Top that off with a lot of fun action and strange locations was a good Halloween atmosphere, and you've got a pretty fun superhero Halloween adventure. This isn't going to go down as a classic, but there's just enough stuff in this Halloween special to make it worthwhile. What kind of monster are you? The Wolverine. Hulk vs. Wolverine is like Godzilla vs. Kong, in the sense that it wants to deliver on its title more than try to be high art. And Jolly G. Willikers Batman, it certainly does. I love how visceral and brutal the fights are. You feel every impact and it genuinely looks like these people are in a lot of pain. Which works because Wolverine and his general cast of foes are pretty brutal characters. Deadpool has a lot of good lines. Oh, that was my favorite gun. The faces do look a little awkward at times, but to be honest, that only enhances certain moments. It's cool to know that the cliffhanger actually had a resolution in Wolverine and the X-Men, top that off with plenty of cool visuals, shots, and the fact it uses its runtime better than most other movies on this list, and you've got an Avenger vs. X-Men battle for the ages. Though I will admit, the origin story scene was really tacked on and slowed the pacing down quite a bit, and I doubt people who don't know either will enjoy this movie as much as those who do. But in the end, it's just a movie that wishes to deliver on its title, and it truly does just that. Puny God. Hulk vs. Thor, in my opinion, is better than its sister movie. It's still a 7 out of 10, but the story itself is based around the conflict the title promises instead of making it into a pseudo team-up movie towards the end. And thus, it has much higher stakes throughout the film's runtime, and it's just a more tightly written movie altogether. The looming threat of the Hulk is felt throughout, Banner's sacrifice of a happy afterlife does sting but fits with his character, and I appreciate that they tried to give more depth to some of the side characters than they did in the last movie. Unfortunately, while the story is better than the one in Hulk vs. Wolverine, 
The action was not as good, and a lot of the characters, while more fleshed out, are not that developed either, as most have no real story arcs of their own outside of just Protect Odin. And like with the last movie, I'm pretty sure people who don't know either will not enjoy this movie as much as those who do. But in the end, much like Hulk vs. Wolverine, this is a movie that just wants to deliver on its title, and it does just that. Strange, isn't it? Doctor Strange is honestly a good movie. Nothing exceptional, just a good movie. It feels less like a superhero movie, but more of a character study of Strange himself. And Strange's story arc is a really good one at that. He is a man who has lost everything and became closed off to the world because of it, and it follows his spiritual journey to overcome his grief. And I like that the magical conflict actually ties into Strange being a doctor. This does lead to some genuinely emotional moments that honestly caught me by surprise. Couple that with lots of cool monsters and imagery, and you've got a fun movie. I mean, sure, it's slow in the action department, and Mordo's transition from good guy to bad guy was not handled too well, but it's just hard to not like this movie. So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? TECHNOLOGY! Considering how Iron Man has mostly starred in subpar to downright awful movies on this list, I did not expect Rise of Technivore to be this good, let alone great. The animation here is the best in the entirety of this list. It's fluid, fast-paced, and just gorgeous to look at. And I like that Iron Man becomes a wanted fugitive not because he was framed, but because he flees from questioning. That's so in character, it's honestly hilarious. And I totally buy him wanting to avenge War Machine. While brief, their little game of racing and roughhousing really establishes these two as good friends. Heck, I like how this movie puts all of Iron Man's greatest strengths and weaknesses on full display. The Punisher was a cool guest appearance, and the inclusion of Black Widow and Hawkeye is a natural fit. And the high stakes of the final battle is felt. Speaking of which, let's talk about what is easily the best part of this movie, and my favorite villain in the entirety of this lineup. Ezekiel and his titular Technivores. His design is distinct and eye-catching, almost alien in a sense, and how his views of the world contrast against Iron Man's ideals, his biotechnological powers, and how he's seemingly one step ahead of everyone makes him a truly haunting force to be reckoned with. So much so, it actually starts to feel more like a horror movie at times. He's almost like death in a sense, where he doesn't have a lot of screen time, but his presence remains throughout, and the threat he poses is definitely real. Though some elements do prevent this movie from being rated any higher, this was a solid movie and one I highly recommend. And to think, this is only number two. This wasn't even a contest. Rise of Technivore may be great, but Planet Hulk is on a whole nother level. The story is the most engaging out of all the movies on this list, complete with a lot of really good, memorable characters. The Red King is a really good, deplorable villain. The action is some of the best I've seen on this list. Maybe not stylized like Technivore, but the stakes are clear and high from beginning to end. And it's easily the most cinematic of all the Marvel animated movies, and even the most dramatic. The journey the Hulk goes through from disgruntled outcast to noble savior is a really good one and is possibly one of the best storylines the character ever had in film. And the final battle is definitely one of the most intense and entertaining I've seen. 
It's small in scale, but that's because this battle is a lot more personal. It's just a duel between Sakaar's new savior and its false ruler, in a battle to see who will topple who first. Couple that with lots of fun creature designs, and you've got what is easily the magnum opus of Marvel Animation. This may have been a long, arduous journey with many, many low points, but it's movies like this that made it all worth it. And that is the entire film catalog of Marvel Animation, as of 2023. And while I can see why it never took off the same way that the DC animated movies did, I do think it was an overall solid lineup, with the occasional blemish. But hey, three objectively bad movies out of a lineup of 16? That's not bad, all things considered. Still, I'd give the full catalog of Marvel Animation a 7 out of 10 and it is something I recommend to anyone who likes superheroes. But what are your thoughts? Do you think another movie should have been number one? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and share this video with your friends. And until next time, I will see you all later.